so so yeah so so yeah so going back again to what I was saying so instead of so so let's just discuss this for a moment right before we get into into the diagram right so uh, so I think the the biggest problem with a lot of so so when you start a new project right you have no traffic right and that's gonna be the case for many months maybe even years right so technically let's just say like this no matter where you host your stuff when you release a new product it's gonna be sufficient in 99.9% .9 of the cases right now one of the biggest mistakes one can do is one of these two things number one you can try to do your own infrastructure like I did and knowing nothing about the infrastructure so that means I'm gonna go and set up my servers manually, but I don't know anything about it. So that's a huge mistake. So, so these are the moments when you wanna utilize GCP, AWS, Azure, and some of these hosting providers. Even maybe hack Digital Ocean has an app marketplace, right? Of course, the down, I wouldn't say downside, when you play for the, or you pay for the cloud, you basically, what you're paying for, the, this extra money, you're paying for convenience, right? You're basically saying, I don't actually wanna deal with infrastructure i just want to focus on building my product and i want to leave the infrastructure to these infrastructure services right when you go this path where i went with programmer network you can save a lot of money but you replace it with time even though i i invest zero maintenance time into this because it's stable but it takes a while to set this up so let's let's talk about these two things so again as i said you can go either the cloud providers like gcp aws they take away some some pains from you, but you pay a little bit extra. So you pay for the time that they take away from you. So this is how Programming Network is hosted, really. So, so Programming Network front-end is hosted on Cloudflare Pages, which is a free service. In my opinion, it's, uh, it's tragic that it's free for them because this is so amazing. This is similar to, uh, let's say, uh, GitHub Pages, but a lot better. Why is it better, you might ask? Well, it's better because you have the whole Cloudflare CDN, WAF. Uh, Cloudflare is absolutely insane. This is the best thing it has been for like 20 years now. So let me show you. So Cloudflare, so uh, Program Network, again, front-end is hosted on Cloudflare Pages. So uh, my API and my front-end are uh, basically decoupled fully, right? But you can see, for example, I have the security, I have the free SSL, I have full SSL, DDoS protection, and a lot more, right? So if we take a look here at the WAF, right? If we take a look at the uh, web application firewall, right? And this is all free, keep in mind, right? You can see here that I have some WAF rules. So for example, if I go to my Grafana programmer network here, and if you go to that URL, what what you're gonna notice, you're gonna notice that, that you're gonna get blocked. Why are you gonna get blocked? Is because I'm not allowing traffic from any IP ranges except my own, right? So you can see with Cloudflare, you get a lot of amazing free stuff. So you get this, you also get the uh, web workers and you get serverless functions for free. So you have these worker routes. So you can see, for example, if I go to the worker route, I have an, uh, my sitemap XML, this sitemap router. This is basically almost like a serverless function here, right? And again, it's amazingly freer. So if we go to um, if we go to the settings over here, and then we take a look at um, if we actually go to manage here, where is my where is my worker implementation? So yeah, so but not to get into details of implementation. So if we go, because we're gonna have this video is gonna be very long. So um, so yeah, so, so my front end is on Cloudflare Pages and it's deployed there as well using the Cloudflare CI. So even I'm not even using GitHub uh, Actions for my front end. As soon as I push my front end to uh, my GitHub repo, uh, Cloudflare Pages basically handle that, right? So if I go back here and I go to uh, pages, right? This is my programmer network front end, as you can see. And even the CI here, as you can see, you have the staging for free. You can set up your staging environment. You have a lot of stuff. If we go to custom domains here, this is where you add your domain. As you can see, programmer network, they have these integrations, which is in the beta, I'm not gonna get there. And then you have the settings here for your environmental variables, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's pretty awesome. So that's where the front end is. Now, if we go back to the diagram, you can see that my front end is interfacing, it's, it's calling the API, which is on Hetzner. 
And on Hetzner, I have, so I have a firewall in front of my front end and a CDN and all of that stuff. And then my, uh, my front end calls my, um, my back end, right? But, uh, my front end can, so, so uh, only IP ranges, which I allowed through, uh, through, through my uh, firewall on Hetzner are allowed to call my API. And the, uh, the IP ranges that are allowed to call my API are Cloudflare IP ranges, right? So if we get over here, I'm saying on my API, hey API, only allow traffic through these guys, right? And how do I do this? Well, I have a firewall on my Hetzner where I'm saying, hey, only allow traffic from IPv4 and IPv6 IP ranges. So that's super awesome. So, right, so we have Cloudflare, Right, so this is this is really great, right? So this is so this firewall here. This is my uh, host machine firewall. This is the firewall on my um, on my Hetzner machine on my host. Then I have Nginx, and uh, and then I have internal Nginx. So this Nginx doesn't really do much. It does uh, it does some stuff internally. It basically I use it for uh, mostly for. Um, for the cert bot, so when I need to renew my Let's Encrypt certificates, I'm using Let's Encrypt for SSL, right? So this Nginx right now doesn't do much, it does some internal stuff. And then as you can see here, uh, further down, further on, we have the Fastify API, which is also running on, um, fa API is running also, of course, on my Hetzner, and then my Postgres database as well is hosted on Hetzner as well. So everything is hosted on Hetzner, and then as you can see, I have my reporting, a stack on Hetzner as well. So if I go to my Grafana here, you can see I have the Grafana stack as well. I can check various types of things. I have my API logs. I'm using uh, log rotate and I'm using, um, I can show you a bit of that. So if we go to alerting, we have alert rules. Here we have some rules, right? So if we go to the rules, uh, if we go to this specific rule here, and I'm using low key, so if you're not aware, low key is uh, I basically gather my logs using low key. Uh, I parse them using obviously Grafana here. So let me take a look at that. So as you can see, so what I also have here, I have an alert manager as well. And uh, whenever my API gets a 500, I send a message to my uh, Slack channel that I have my Slack, uh, Program Network Slack. And this is free. Think of this as Sentry.js, just for free. So I have, I have configured Loki and my Grafana and Alert Manager in a way where I can use it now myself as Sentry.js just for free, right? So if we go back over here uh, and take a look at other dashboards, so I have the API logs, as you can see, and I can say, give me the logs, I don't know, past two days. I can see that there were some issues and usually this is how I, so basically it's a log first development if I may call it, right? Um, then I have my Postgres database that I can monitor as well. So I'm monitoring my database here. And in most cases, again, it's a very low traffic thing, but if you build an API that's struggling, it's usually struggle, the database is gonna struggle, not the API itself. Anyway, not to get into too many details, so I have the whole Grafana Prometheus stack here. As you can see, all of these are Docker images. So every single one of these, CertBot is a Docker image. Google Cat Visor is a Docker image. I use this Google Cat Visor to monitor the performance of Docker images. Alert Manager I use to send basically a, um, yeah, alerts to my Slack. Prometheus. Node exporter, Postgres exporter, these two things are used to monitor my um, performance on my uh, whole server, node exporter, and then Postgres exporter is monitoring uh, Postgres performance, right? So anyway, all of this stuff is running just to give you an idea. If we take a look at my resource usage, my CPU is at 7%, my memory usage is at 9%. So you can see basically, you can see basically that server is fully underutilized. So I'm paying $20, 20 euros a month. Server is fully unutilized. Why? Well, because programming network doesn't have traffic, right? Even if I had thousands of users, right? 
concurrent users every day, these resources would still be underutilized. So why do I put emphasis on this underutilized thing? Well, it's because, um, because you can see that you can really today in modern time of hosting, if you can set these things up yourself, you can really host things for pretty much free, right? Now, one emphasis that we have to put on is you need to document all of these steps. So there's a lot of stuff that I've done. So when you look at this, there's a lot of stuff involved. So these things work, networking, setting up Docker networks, exposing certain things, keeping some things internal, setting up a VPS or something, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? But, so I'm not using any proper infrastructure as code tool, but at the very least, what I did, I documented every single script and every single instruction. I have my firewall rules here. So U, U, F, W, right? So if you don't do this, good luck. You're gonna cry, you're gonna suffer. Uh, so the most, so if you, if you decide to take this path, it's not hard, you can do it. Again, you start with one thing, you add another thing. So it's not that I built this in one go. Initially, I had a front-end and the API, then a database, then a load balancer, then a Redis, because Redis is also, yeah, here is the Redis. So it's not that I sat and did all of this. And of course, keep in mind, super, super fundamental, important thing. You don't need 90% of this at the start. So when I started, I had React, I had a front-end, I had an API with Postgres and that was it. But then as I started streaming on this Twitch channel, you guys would report bugs and I would be like, hmm, man, it would be cool that I can actually see what happened, what actually happened, right? I don't know, I mean, some dude said I can't sign up, why? And then I added my Grafana and my Prometheus and Alert Manager. So, so infrastructure is a living dynamic thing. This, this thing might grow to 20 more services or might not, right? Right now, I don't need more of it, right? Uh, but you have to scale it as you need it. You, you're not gonna sit and just add all of this for no reason, right? So no matter if you're an early age startup or whatever, you really need this and you need this, right? And then you go, okay, well, we need a reverse proxy now. We need to scale our Node.js. We need clustering. We need this and that. Then you add it, right? But no, you don't start here. You start here, right? So anyway, this is, this is how it works. It's super cheap. Again, if I downscale the server to five euros a month, it would still do exactly the same thing. The great thing about this when it's documented is I can extend this easily now. I can add any other service very easily in one day or less. Why? Because I have every single step documented. As I was adding every single of those things, I was doing it one-to-one -one with my documentation, which is here, right? Of course, I can't open this documentation because it's very private, but you can even see that even my Cloudflare, Cloudflare worker is here, basically. So yeah, so that is, um, that is, the, uh, that is the program network infrastructure and also a combination of self-hosting myself.